Hey everyone, welcome to this very special video here on my channel. We're gonna be talking a little bit about what gets people interested in computers. And I'm gonna be doing this by introducing you to one of my friends who's actually shown up a couple times on this channel. His name's Josh, and he does like computer technician repair stuff and system design. I don't really know everything about that because I do software development here, but we're gonna bring him on to talk about what got him started, what keeps him motivated, and why you might be interested in that kind of career. Sound good? Let's get to it. Hi there, my name's Josh, and I have a YouTube channel. I make videos over PC hardware, systems, concepts, theories. So I remember back in the early 2000s when the Annoying Orange was big, and I think Smosh was big too. Uh, my friend Caleb got me into YouTube. He's like, oh, look at all these videos. And I was like, oh, I gotta watch more. And he was like, we gotta create more. Um, it's just like a way different way of thinking. And we started making some skits. Uh, he, he made some really cool stuff. Uh, cool stuff at the time. It's kind of dorky looking back. <laughs> but um, it was really cool. And then actually seeing his channel grow over these years, um, it's got me excited. And it also said, it also tells me like, hey, this is worth my time. Teaching can actually be a viable option. Yeah, my, my first uh, bow into YouTube was like, oh, I gotta make all these like weird tutorials, like how to use a toaster, it's just a legendary video. Um, <laughs> and um, I did a lot of like Let's Plays, but I didn't really have a focus. I didn't really have a game plan. I was like, oh, I gotta make this. So I can make some money and get out of my parents' house. I started actually like Christmas of 2019. That was like, a, we're gonna do it. And what got me into it is like, I can fix a computer for money and maybe teach the person a little bit, but ultimately I want to render the job just kind of mo pointless. Like I want people to be empowered to fix their stuff. I want them to understand what goes on in the magic black box there. What started getting into computers? Well, I think it started back when I was like 13. Um, I enjoyed playing some derpy little games on the computer. Um, this was like SimCity, Lemmings, uh, Golf, just like really dorky 98 classics. And then um, I got into this game called RuneScape and I was like, oh, I love this game. And we had a compact computer and the hard drive died on it. Well, now that I know the hard drive died, but like back then it was like push a power button and it didn't work. And I was like, I, I want to fix this. I want to get back to gaming. I want to get back to doing what I enjoy. And it was, it incentivized me to take it apart and try to figure out what was going on and maybe develop a solution. So between 13 and 16, I didn't really actively pursue it. Like if, so, if it was ever mentioned, you know, I would listen. I know we had a network administrator at our school. And whenever I saw him get on a computer, I was like, whoa, this guy's opening up PowerShell and typing in commands at the speed of light. He is fixing stuff like um, this complex issue that I haven't been able to solve for a week, he solves in five minutes. Like this guy is, it, it was like a level of aspiration. Like he was cool, I want to be this guy. Uh, I learned a lot when I was 16. Actually, I think I learned a great foundation of knowledge when I was 16. It all started at a track meet on a very cold day. Uh, my friend Caleb and I, we were, um, we had the two mile, it was the last event, and we were like, okay, we gotta do something. We are bored out of our minds. So we go on a walk, and uh, we walk into this, this little small town, and we find a library. We go in the library, it's actually pretty big. It has a huge, it has a moderately big technical reference section for a library, like a community one, and I was able to find Scott Mueller's Upgrading and Repairing PCs, and I think it was the 21st edition. Uh, that is a very thick book. It is about 1,300 pages. I have read it all. What's up? Oh yeah, I do have it here. Um, I always keep it around the, the store because like, whenever I have questions of something, like, this is the book. And like, you can see right now, I even have it checked out from the library. <laughs> But a very meaty book. It has taught me so much. And I actually learned a lot from this when, I, when we first got it. It was a case of we got these books at the track meet and we somehow convinced the librarian people like, hey, we have a legitimate card back where we're from. And Caleb was able to check them out. And then he's like, dude, you have to give me those back in a week. 
Like, I'm not paying late fines. <laughs> um, so I read the whole thing in a week. This was over 100 pages a day. I think it was like 200 pages on average. Um, I had read the thing from beginning to end, and at the time, it didn't make sense. I, and I gotta say that like a lot of that book didn't make sense at the time. But as I got into you know interacting with computers the next year, um, I went around the high school kind of fixing stuff, and that was the book coming alive. But like reading it in one week was amazing. I the the experience gain was just incredible. Um, it was like taking an eight week class in one week. It was, it was quite amazing. <laughs> so that was like my, okay, I have to learn about this and I have to put energy into learning about this. You know, I'm not gonna become a computer genius by accident. I, I have to, to read books, I have to learn about new technologies and I have to understand where stuff is going. Oh my gosh, I was a weirdo in high school. So when you're in high school, you're like, oh, I gotta get the new shoes, gotta play the Fortnite game, got to consume the substances, but um, I wasn't into that at all. Um, in fact, I think I had like four friends at max. Um, I really only had like two that have lasted. And with all this amazing time that I don't spend partying or socializing, I had a lot of time to study. So I went to my school's library, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> they got rid of it for a renovation and I checked out every single math book that I could find. So I studied everything I could get my hands on and I realized that math was a very foundational thing to what I'm getting into. Um, and that was just, it became a habit of, of studying. Uh, that was a huge thing in high school and then my senior year I was like okay I gotta get a job. So I applied to every local computer store and they were like no. It was just like I didn't have the the skills and the career capital to really make an impression. So I wanted to make my own store. Started looking up some rents and stuff and like, you know, that's that's where my mind went. I, it went into entrepreneurship. How's that going? It's going great. <laughs> I, I, I do like servicing people. You know, I, I love fixing computers, but it, it's rough. It's, it's rough and um, being a technician of any field is kind of monotonous. You know, a lot of people like, oh, you must be super smart and like a genius. And you're like, if I'm honest, like I'm doing the same thing I did for this computer for the past 30 computers. You know, we're gonna back it up, clean it up, upgrade it, update it. It's a very simple process. And I really like teaching. So now I'm in the transition of getting into teaching. And that has forced me to learn stuff better it has forced me to um, be able to express thoughts more clearly on this, and it's been good. So what's the next level? What is the next level? What, is, what are my goals? What are the next level? This is a great question to ask for anyone. My goal is the same as when I was 13 years old. My goal is to understand what happens in the black box of a computer. Um, a black box is in like, it's mysterious, there's, uh, some, for somehow you put in electricity and you get like magical colors and you get to play games and you get to talk to people across the world. What, what is happening in between this? What is happening to create this just magical process? To me it's magical. I, I love computers and I'm, I'm still struggling with that question of what is going on? And that could be the processor level, that could be the programming level, that could be everywhere in between. Actually I remember in um, uh, I think it was freshman year of high school. I got this purple book. It was like Java Essential Beginners or something. And it was a pretty cool book. Um, I, I did all the work, work examples, got a good foundation. Um, past that, not a whole lot of programming. I, I do know how to, how to program in a programming language called BF. Dude, don't forget TI Basic. Oh yeah, TI Basic. How could I forget? I love TI Basic. Oh my gosh, in math class, it was a, it was in, oh my gosh. So I was in advanced math, but I was like bored in advanced math. So I, um, we had these yellow TI-86 calculators and I, pr I turned it on and then I saw this magical program button, so it's like PRGM, I'm like what? And it was like new, name your file. I named it tacos, I named everyone tacos. But um, this was a, 
a Turing complete language. There was if statements, there's what, there's else, there's for, there's while, there was graphical output, and like, I fell in love with this thing. I ended up downloading the manual, and I think I asked a teacher to print off like 600 pages, and they were like, what? Sure. <laughs> but I ended up like making like a little leaf game with it. What do you um, mean? A little leaf game. Okay, well, yeah. Um, my friend and I made up a little story and we drew out this pixel leaf. I gave him some graph paper. I was like, draw me a leaf. I'm, I have the art, art skills of a, pota a potato, but I can program. So draw me a leaf. And then I, I took this graph and I put it into the calculator and it was literally drawing X, Y coordinates of this leaf. And then from there I attached movement. I made it go up and down, left and right. And then I added gravity, like, hey, if you are above the floor, go back down to the floor. <laughs> and, um, and then I think the very first level and probably the final level was like, move from the left side of the screen to the right. So that was my programming experience. And I know all that sounds kind of derpy, but I had a lot of fun with it, even though it was just like this little calculator, so much fun because I was able to express myself with, with a computer and, and create something. And I gave, I gave, I developed a couple of other games of like, um, like creating puzzles, having stuff move, move around. And um, I got to see the enjoyment that that put on other people's faces as well. So how, how deep and I don't know, how, how challenging should the goal be? I think really challenging because if it's not, you're not gonna be excited. An example would be in high school, um, to solve a problem was we had these Lenovo all-in-ones and they were really slow to render videos with and I was like ah oh, Simple solution. We build a supercomputer with all the spare boxes. We got laying around <laughs> And um, what I ended up creating was a Beowulf cluster, which is like a, a mixture of nodes with, with the central node all attached by a network switch and running a version of Linux and all that sounds crazy, but like um I can, I can shortly simplify that now, but at the time, I had no clue what I was doing. Like, I barely knew what an ethernet cord was, but I was like, I want to build a supercomputer. This sounds cool. Uh, did I ever get it done? It worked for like a minute and then crashed. <laughs> it was still a very exciting thing, and like, I worked on it so much for like two or three weeks of like learning everything about Linux, hardware, uh, connecting stuff, and. I feel like through those big projects, you learn a lot. So if you're interested in learning about the black box and what happens inside um, with computers and computer systems, feel free to check out my channel. I've got some really great content and I'm trying to create some more too. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions for Josh, let me know in the comments section below or best of all, go visit his channel and ask him yourself. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.